Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C++. And today we're going to be discussing... What are we going to be discussing? Oh yes, passing by reference and how to pass a function as a parameter. Hmm, that sounds really interesting. So first of all, uh, I want to go through the difference between passing by value and passing by reference. So first, I would like to make uh, some integers here. So int num1 is, let's say that's equal to 5. And now let's create a function. So I'm going to call this function void uh, value. And all it's going to do is pass that one int as a as a parameter by value. So, But I'll explain the difference, don't worry. So this function is called value passes parameter by value. And that's all it's going to do. So let's go down here and actually type that out again. So void value and I'll call it int num1 and let's go num1 plus equals 5. How does that sound? Does that sound fair? So we passed num1 in here and now we're going to increment it up by 5. Now let's actually print it. So C out num1. So I click save and let's run this. Five. Wait a minute, let's look at this. Okay, so num1 is equal to five. Then, oh wait a minute, I didn't even call it. My bad. First of all, let's actually call that function. <laughs> there we go. Click save and now let's run it. There we go. Now it should come out as ten, right? Okay, there we go. Now this is what I wanted to see. It still says five. Okay, now I can explain why. So we look at this num1, we set it equal to 5, then we pass it as a parameter into value, then we increment it up by 5. So now it should be 10, right? So after we call this function and then we printed it, why is it still 5? Well, when you pass a uh, parameter in by value, which is what we're doing by default, then what happens is a copy of that variable is being made. And what I mean by that is this is a literally a declaration of an entirely new variable. This is a whole different variable. This num1 is separate from this num1. Uh, and that's kind of another uh, way of seeing how a variable scope comes into play. Remember, we couldn't, uh, I couldn't increment num1 up here if this was a, uh, if I didn't call this num1. If I call this x and I said num1 plus equals 5, I'd get an error because x wasn't, or excuse me, because num1 wasn't defined in here. So, you know, if I call this x, see now num1's undefined. And that's, well, because we're not accessing this num1 now, are we? So, this is a whole different variable. And, and uh, remember, it's not always going to be equal to uh, num1 up here. We could call value as many times as we want and put whatever we would like in there. We could go, you know, value and, you know, pass in 6, you know, and it still works. And then once we call it here, num1 would then be equal to 6 instead of the 5. So it's a whole new variable. But what if you actually want it to keep those changes? Uh, well, we could make this like an int and then return it and set it equal to a whole new variable up here, right? Well, that's kind of tedious. Uh, we don't want to actually have to do that. We don't want to make this an int and then set it equal to something and all that. We could just pass it by reference. So let's figure out how you go about doing that and, I'll, and then at that point I'll actually show you the difference. Or I mean what it means. So we'll make it void and I'll call it reference. Uh, and then the data type. Not um, This by default is by value. In order to make it by reference, put an ampersand right next to it. No space in between. Then down here, we'll call it referent, wait a minute, refer, ah, and passes parameter by reference. Man, I'm just, oh my goodness. And, oh my goodness, I didn't do the at param up here, my bad. Number, number in question, I don't know. And when you type it down here, there will be a slight difference. Instead of just int, you throw in the ampersand right after that, since we now know it's by reference. And number to be incremented. There we go. And I spell everything up. Okay. 
So it's by reference. So there's an ampersand that'll go there. So let's go back down here and actually create the definition for it. So void reference. And that's why I'm calling I'm calling one function value and one reference just so it's easy to remember. And this time we'll be passing in an int, but by reference. And we'll still call it num1. Why not? And now let's actually increment num1 up. Plus equals 5. So down here we'll call reference. When you call reference, you still just type in num1. You don't go num1 ampersand. You don't do that. You just you still just put it in normally. And let's print it all out again. So num1. There we go. So let's run this. Ah, there we go. See, now we got a 10 there. So let's look at this. So when you pass by reference, what does this exactly do? Well, what reference means is to refer the address of whatever variable is being passed in. And that's this guy. So we're not creating a whole new variable here. We're actually going to reference the address uh, for whatever number is passed in as the parameter. So if any changes you make to it will affect the address. You're going to be, you know, affecting the value of the address. So you're going to be getting a whole new value when you change it. So any changes you make will become permanent, and I'll prove it to you. I'll actually give this a different name. I'll call it Z, and I'll call this Z this time. I'll click Save, and there we go, and let's run this. And now it's still 10. Just to see that, you know, I give it different names, but it still worked, so. So we could actually send num1 in to do a whole bunch of different things. We could, uh, let's, let's, let's try something out, shall we? So you know what? I'm actually going to just get rid of all these. Yeah, I'll probably get rid of all this and make something up. I should probably make something up. Let's make an integer here called, let's say, int, I don't know, um, score. And let's actually create a function that will ask the user for, the, for their score. So I'll call it void ask user. And let's have them ask for two things. Let's have them ask for their score and their name. How about that? So I'll have to create another one called string name. Is string up there? Okay, remember, make sure your string class is included. So now we're going to be throwing in their n in, or the score and their name, which is a string. Now, since we're going to be modifying both of these, both of these we pass in uh, by value, or excuse me, by reference. Jeez, I'm tired. Throw those ampersands in there. So we'll call it uh, ask user. You know, fill in score and name. And so at param int the user's score. And then another one. Uh, the user's name. Something like that, right? That should be good. So now we're going to actually create uh, the definition for it. So it's called ask user. So void ask user. And let's now pass them both in. So uh, we'll have int, let's call it new score. And string new name. How about that? So then we'll have a C out print that will be called please. Let's have it say, uh, please type in your name. I'll just do the name first, how about that? And then C in name. And then another C out will come out that says, oh, whoops, it has to be new name. Sorry about that. And then C out. Um, enter your score, some, something like that. I don't know. And I'm, I'm really making this up as I go, but I think this makes sense, doesn't it? So, new score. So, we created these two variables here, and now we're going to have to pass them in as parameters. So, let's call this function. Let's call ask user, and we'll pass in both the score and the name. Okay, so, whoa. String, name, int. Oh, I forgot to throw in my little ampersands right here. Ampersand and ampersand. There we go. So make sure you put in the by references down there as well. So okay, so now we uh, created these two variables, and now we're going to pass them into our ask user, and then we're going to set them to something. Then 
let's actually, well, create another function that'll just print it for us. So we'll call it void and you know what? Let's do something else completely. Calculate outcome. I know I'm completely making this up. And we'll have to throw both the their name and their both their name and I guess uh their score. So int and string. Okay, now um something to bear in mind with the reference. Uh, I want you to remember, if we're going to be passing in by reference, that's only if we're going to be modifying it. Notice how in the ask user, we're going to be, you know, modifying the new score and the, and the name here. But with the calculate, all this is, let's, let's say what this function will do is, depending on what their score is, print a certain message out. Like if they got above 50, let's have it say good job. If they got less than 50, so whatever this is, not too good. In such a function, are we going to be changing these values? No. So we're not going to be passing by reference since we're not going to be changing their values. So we're going to be passing them by value instead. So I'll have it called calculate outcome. I'm not going to give it a definition. I'll just pass that up. Sorry. Param int and score of user. And let's create another parameter. Uh, which is the string name of user, and that's all. It's, that's all it's going to do. So, uh, okay. So let's uh, go down here and go void print outcome. Is that what I called it? I can't. I can't even remember what I did. So we'll go int new score. You can call it whatever you want again. String new name, and now let's do something. So since, uh, first of all, let's uh, actually call this function again. So it's called calculate outcome. And there we go. And we had to put in the calculate outcome. Um, oh, it's print outcome, isn't it? Calculate, oh my goodness, it's calculate. So, okay, so now we're going to be passing in the score and our name again. So depending on whatever our score is, we're gonna print something out. So we're gonna be so this new score will be equal to whatever score is, and we're gonna set it whatever it is in this function. So let's go create some if statements here. So if let's say new score is greater than fifty, let's have a message pop out that says uh you did not fail. I don't know. And if you uh, did get below 50, or if you got 50 or below, let's have it say, you fail. This is, this is terrible. I mean, I shouldn't be, you know, throwing all these you fail examples in all my tutorials. I've been doing that in a lot of my languages. I probably shouldn't be doing it. So, whoa. Uh -oh. oh, there we go. Now it says, okay, so please type in your name. So... Let's actually follow us a little bit. Okay, so we created these two variables. They were both declared in our main function. Then we went into our ask user function, passing them, passing them both in. So we went to our ask user, and it says, please uh, print out your name. So type out your name. So I'll type in Adam. Uh, enter your score. I'll type in 60. And it says, you did not fail, because it left the function, went to our calculate outcome, passed them both in, and... Then, when we went down here, it passed in whatever we typed in, which was the 60, and it said if it's greater than 60, you did not fail. And let me put something else in here. You did not fail. You know what? Since I used that one, let's use this one. So I'll make that a comma there, and let's throw in their name as well, since I should probably use new names since I didn't use it. And let's run it this time. So let's fail this time. Let's. Let's fail. I'll type in 40. Oh, oh wait a minute. At the, oh, I, that's going to be an error right there. Put in my name first. Adam, then enter your score 40. Now it says you fail Adam because now we printed our name. So that's really, really cool. So uh, I did not get into functions as parameters. So I guess that's going to have to be next tutorial. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you so you can see when to pass by uh, value and when to pass by excuse me, when to pass by value, then when to pass by reference. So if you're going to change the values, pass by reference. 
If you're not, just keep them as is. Uh, so, I'll see you next time.